Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of the New Artist Spotlight Quick Fire Five. What's up, everybody, and welcome to this year's 2023 New Artist Spotlight Quick Fire Five compilation. We are very excited to hear from all the artists who've been on with us this year in the New Artist Spotlight community. Some fantastic talent, and I'm looking forward to hearing all their picks. Hi, I'm William Lovett. And I was on the podcast season five, episode 18. Hi, thanks so much for having me. I'm Emily Gray, and I was on season five, episode 19 of the NAS podcast. Hi, I'm Eddie Eagle. And I'm JHM. And we are Two, Two Odd Dogs. Dogs. Hello, everybody. Sano Hill here. Hi, my name is James Hawking, and I'm a piano player. I had the honor to be and thoroughly enjoyed being on episode three in season five. Hey, it's Ed from Electric Soul. I was on the podcast in July, 2023, the 16th episode of season five. Hey, Rich Allen here from Rich Allen Music. I'm so uh, grateful to be part of the Quick Five. Hey, it's Will Joy. Hello everybody, this is Danny Horvitz and I'm so pleased to be here with you. I was featured on the new Artist Spotlight podcast on season five, episode 14. Hi, my name is Kyle M. Watson and I'm from season four, episode 16 of new Artist Spotlight podcast. Hey everyone, this is Eleanor Collides and this is my Quick Fire Five. Hey, I'm Smooth Salin and I am back for the Quick Fire Five. Hey everyone, it's Cecily here. Hi, it's Liz James from Bad Scullions, and I'm going to give you my quick fire five. Hey, hey, greetings from beautiful Vancouver. This is Darren from Coastal Town doing the quick fire five. Hi, I'm Blue Scar, and this is my uh, NAS podcast, um, Five Questions. I was on the pod on episode 23 um, earlier this year. Hey, NAS fam, it's Brad from Mercury Teardrop here. So excited to do the Quick Fire 5 special edition. Hey, yeah, uh, David here, the artist formerly known as Charlie Black. Sorry for any confusion. Hey, everybody, Gavin Wolby here. Thanks for inviting me on your Quick Fire 5. Hi, my name is Sabrina Barreto. Hi, this is Jimmy from Wretched Pinhead Puppets here to answer the NAS questions for the year. Hi, guys, this is Michael from the Blindfold Experience. Hey, Big Bald Ben here. I am a heavy rock artist from Pennsylvania, and I'm a proud member of the New Artist Spotlight. Hey, this is Kelly Fleming. I am beaming out into the NAS universe. I was a guest on Season 5, Episode 12 of the NAS podcast. Hi! Hi. I'm Alvare. I'm Shag. And we are Arnoldo's Lizards. Hello, I am Charles Connolly. I am an artist on the NAS, uh, the new artist spotlight, and uh, there we go. Hey, my name is Charlie Smith. I'm an alternative acoustic act from Hampshire, UK. Hi, I'm Dorian Whisper. I'm with NAS since 2020. And if you want to know more, check out season three, episode 18. Hi, this is Juan Aranha, and I was at episode 19 in the season four of NAS podcast. Hey, this is Plummy from Fuck You, Andres. I was not on an episode, and you know that. But thanks for having me. Hello there. General Kenobi. This is Andres Bocelli from Argentina, and I am the podcast. Now, for a little reminder of the rules, you've got 15 seconds maximum to answer each question. You have to answer. You cannot pass. You cannot give multiple people. You gotta, you got to give an actual answer. If you take over 15 seconds, you will be banned from New Artist Spotlight for eternity. If you fail, you're banned from the podcast forever. You never get a feature from me or will go. You'll be banished to hell, where you'll live out the rest of your days in a miserable, fiery, awful place. And you'll be forever regretting your choices. If you cannot do the simple task of answering five questions with no more than 15 seconds each. Easy, simple. Right? So, good luck. It was harder than you think. Make sure you answer in those 15 seconds. Let's get into it. Question one. Who is your current favorite New Artist Spotlight artist? My current favorite NAS artist is about gorillas and vampires because they blend catchy pop with electronic excellence and really up the fun factor. 
there's too many to name in 15 seconds, but um, as you can hear in the background, I'm playing about gorillas and vampires, and that's who I'm going with. My favorite Naz artist these days is Shaheen. All his tracks have super chill vibes, and I just love them. I'd have to say William Lovett, man. He makes me dance. I put it on when I need to be in a great mood, and I always get there. So hey, William, keep, keep grinding and putting out that funk. Yeah, man. Currently, my favorite Nas artist is William Lovett. His songs are just very happy, it's well produced, and they're funky. My favorite NAS artist at the moment is uh, Billy Lowry. Why? Because of the originality of the song construction <laughs> and the wonderment of the songs themselves and uh, Billy's performance. Uh, it reminds me a lot of Dave Davis, a guitarist in The Kinks. It seems erratic and the arrangements like fairly erratic, maybe slightly random, but actually it all fits together perfectly well and, and is, is everyone's a masterpiece. I would say my current NAS favorite artist would have to be Billy Lowry. Uh, you check out his work, it's really cool. And the more you listen, the deeper it goes. So just love it, layers on layers, Billy Lowry. I mean, that is a, a huge question, basically impossible to answer. Jeez. Oh, I think it's probably going to have to be Charlie Black or Eleanor Collides, just because I, I love them both so much as people, and I sort of follow their music very closely. I love the content that they put out, and I can't decide between the two. Obviously, there's so many more people that I would name. Um, I hate this question. Um, this is an artist. I love their music. Every time they pop up on my release radar, it makes me happy. Um, and you never know what you're going to get. And that artist is Eleanor Collides. What a difficult question. So many fantastic artists. The more I'm involved with Naz, the more incredible artists uh, I come across. Where does one start? There's so many names I could pick from. But the artist I'm going to pick is uh, somebody who's released some extraordinary singles over the past year as an album forthcoming uh, and I love everything that's released and that's Eleanor Collides. So my favourite NAS artist has to be Mal Fantome. Um, I, I just think they're so good. Their music speaks to me on some kind of deep level. Um, I think they are the standard for that type of melodic indie rock. Um, the production is amazing, the way it's presented, the artwork, the videos, it's all just amazing. I love them. Tuffy, uh, I want to say two odd dogs, but I know that Ed Eagle and JHM, neither of them want the uh, want the credit. So I'm going to go with Blue Scar. He's got some quality tunes. I love to hear the uh, everything he comes up with. So creative. Right now, I would say Patrick Holm is my favorite artist. For me, it's JHM. He writes amazing songs, and he also lets me sing some of them. I made him go first, so he wouldn't know that I was going to do that. My favorite Nas artist is still JHM because I love the way he composed his songs and make all the songs sounds to me. This one's so hard and I'm sure super hard for everybody, but I have to say, JHM, I can just never get into the wilderness out of my head and I just love his songwriting and production, just great stuff. I think he's brilliant. So my favorite current Naz artist, well, it's cliche, it's hard to pick one, so I'll pick two, actually. Um, Charles Connolly and Mercury Teardrop. They're just masters of their craft. Always love them. Has to be Hark. Do you hear? Mercury Teardrop. Yes, Mercury Teardrop, who did a fantastic remix of one of my songs this year. And I just love the variation of sound and the explorations that Brad goes on in music. Love it. Love it. So Joy Division and Cocteau Twins-ish in this song. Whew, love it. Okay. My favorite artist from Nas at this certain moment is has to be Caitlin Goulet. I love her voice and the dark undertones that it has and she has some great songs as well. So Caitlin, all the best to you. My favorite currently is Jonathan Panetta. If you don't know Jonathan Panetta, He's a great, great young artist. He's a rocker. He's from Toronto, Canada. Um, I love his stuff. We've also become friends over the past little while, and we even collaborated on a song called Make Use of Your Time. So check out Anything and Everything by Jonathan Panetta. I would go with young, talented Swedish metal band Kayum. 
but since I'm not sure if they're actually on New Artist Spotlight at the moment, I'm gonna go with another one of my favorites, and that's Emily Gray. Yeah, yay! My favorite artist of the NAS right now would have to be Emily Gray. Her music is great. Her energy is vibrant. I love watching her content on on Instagram. Uh, yeah, she she's she's one to watch. My current favorite New Artist Spotlight artist is probably Cal and Watson. It's too hard to pick between friends, so I am not gonna. That being said, there are a few people whose music I find myself humming down the street on a regular basis. They are Kyle M. Watson, Emily Gray, Smooth Sailing, and the current emperor of the universe, Potrick Alm. That's literally impossible to answer. Um, I'm an eclectic person and we have a group full of crazily talented human beings. And um, I just I just can't answer that because it changes all the time and it's just yeah, it's impossible. Sorry. My current favorite NES artist is Jason Chesley. I would choose uh, Charles Connolly. And I will choose Andres Vasselli, not because he's our friend. Oh yes. It's also a big a great musician. It would probably be again Charles Connolly. Uh, he's right. He writes great songs and produces great songs. He just needs to write more songs. That's to you, Charles. I'm very busy with my album at the moment, so I do not have the time really to set up the tripod and the camera and everything like that. So my uh, favorite Naz artist is uh, Kaminsky, definitely. Um, for the sake of consistency this year, I am going to say, because I've loved every single track that they've done, Krakow, my girls from Sweden, rock on girls. Absolutely brilliant what you've been doing. I'm going to go with um, Jane Marie and Jessica Mia. I love their vocals, I love their vibe, and I love their phrasing. My favorite artist on Naz is Rod Fritz. His music is really fun, and it's just really cool. I really enjoy it. Can't look further than Don Piper. So catchy, so much fun, and he's local, so we can't complain. So uh, my favorite Naz artist at the moment is Go Birch, because I met him in real life, and he's actually a nice guy, and he really helped me out with um um, some editing, which has really, actually really been quite helpful. So I just want to say thanks and yeah, he's a good guy. Question two, what is the first record that you bought? The first record and album that I've ever purchased would have to be Cisco's first album. Now, those of you who know me know that I'm a Cisco and Drew Hill fanatic. So much so that a lot of my music and a lot of my song sound was actually inspired by them. So, if you didn't know, now you know. My first record that I bought was over 50 years ago. So I can't remember for sure, but it was probably a song by the Beatles. Can't remember, but it was probably a Beatles album. Going back from memory, I think it must have been the Blue Album. I do remember that early on, so I'm gonna go with the Beatles Blue Album. So that's like the 62 to 66 Beatles greatest hits, right? Uh, the... Or sorry, 66 yeah. to 70. 66 67 to 70, 70. yeah. Okay, that's one of my favorites too. Actually, I, I bought two albums at the same time. I was like eight years old, or nine, because it's when this second album came out. It's Abbey Road by The Beatles and Double Fantasy by John Lennon and Yoko Ono. And I still listen to Abbey Road pretty much at least once a month all the way through. <laughs> oh gosh, I bought a lot of disco when I was a kid. My first album was probably Say Chic. That was definitely one of the, one of the first ones I ever bought. That would definitely have to be the Spice Girls, which is uh, still a banger today. Unfortunately for my sins, was the Spice Girls debut album. Yes, I was obsessed with Jerry Halliwell for a solid year while I was around about four. Um, I've never bought a record, but the first song that I downloaded on iTunes was on my iPod when I was like eight or nine, and it was Demons by Imagine Dragons. It's a really fun song. I still listen to it now, actually. Uh, the first record I bought, I can't remember. Um, I'm an old dude, and it's been a long time. However, I do remember the first CD I bought, and it was Rush Moving Pictures. And to this day, I can close my eyes and go right back to the moment I popped it into my brand new CD player and heard a CD for the first time and heard one of my favorite albums at the time, 
uh, on a CD. Pretty awesome. The first record I ever bought was actually um, <laughs> Busted's first album. I have zero regrets. No regrets. <laughs> uh, was T Rex Metal Guru, and I bought the record, but. I didn't have a record player. I mean, we, should, we couldn't afford one, really. Uh, but uh, my grand did, and I used to go up to my grand's place and uh, play this, play the single ad infinitum, driving everybody mad. Mark Bolan, what a star. The first record I ever bought was probably U2's Joshua Tree, which is a record I still love and still listen to. Uh, incredible, you two at their peak, really. Um, so yeah, Joshua Tree, first record ever bought. My first album that I bought, I can't even remember the first album that I bought, but the first album that I held in my hands because I, I felt it was too good was Electric Light Orchestra's Time album. So the first record I owned, it was given to me, uh, it was Michael Jackson's Dangerous 1991, it was a cassette. But the first CD I bought myself was Blonde Dance Floor, Michael Jackson, 1997. The first record that I ever bought was uh, Sweet with um, If It Feels Good, Wink It. And I actually have it right here. So, um, look at that. Winking makes you blind. Oh dear. Uh, I think it was Britney Spears' uh, first album, or it might have been the Venga Boys. I had really good taste back then, you know. The first record I bought, hopefully this isn't embarrassing, but uh, Linkin Park Meteora. Haven't listened to it for a while. The first record I bought was Unguarded by Amy Grant. And I got a really long story I can tell you about how I got from there to here, but we'll just leave it at that. The first record I ever bought Personally, was uh, the infamous revival by Eminem. So when I was growing up, um, my grandfather owned a record store, so we had lots of music in the house. But I think I started buying music probably in high school, and I'm pretty sure the first album that I bought was Eric Clapton's Unplugged. It might have been Gordon by the Barenaked Ladies. Um, one of those, one of those two. The first record I ever bought was Spaceman by Babylon Zoo. Um, the year was 1996 um, and I was 12 and it was a huge number one in the UK. Um, it was this kind of weird guy who was on top of the pops um, wearing like a silver skirt and wearing makeup. I, was, I thought it was so cool and yeah, that was the first one I ever bought. The first record I ever bought was Hootie and the Blowfish Crack Review, which I had on a cassette tape and played it endlessly on my Walkman in the 90s. Okay, I know the first record my parents ever bought me was the Jive Bunny and the Master Mixers LP uh, when I was four. I think mine was with my own money, no doubt, just a girl. But yeah, long time ago. <laughs> Going back a bit with this one, some beautiful Dreamy Shoegaze by Lush, and the album was Spooky. I think the first record I bought was uh, Free Wheelie and Bob Dylan, but um, I'm not too sure because I am getting pretty old. My shout out to Bought the Cars. Okay, that's my last almost recent purchase. My car beats out. The first record that I bought was Dark Side of the Moon. Who's the artist again? I think my first record, I was about six years old and I remember getting Kiss Alive and Led Zeppelin II. And it was about 1975 or six. And um, yeah, I just remember those were the first two records. My dad had a record collection and really cool stuff. Rod Stewart, like super early 70s stuff. And it was great and got me into it. But those were the first two that I bought with my own money. Appetite for Destruction from Guns N' Roses. I think it was Bleach by Nirvana, but I, I don't remember very well. Uh, the first record I bought was the Bay City Rollers, and it's funny because I went shopping at Sears, and I bought my Bay City Rollers record, and my sister bought Fleetwood Mac Rumors. First record I owned, it was given to me, was Elton John's Caribou. Uh, the first record I bought was probably Alice Cooper's Greatest Hits, 
Um, this was either Pablo Hoddy by Radiohead or Word Gets Around by Stereophonics, both brilliant and uh, both early 90s um, stalwarts to be. Um, bought from Andy's Records in Oldham, it's not there anymore, but uh, you know, legendary. First album that I bought with my own money, it was one from Oiko Boingo, and it was a, was a double record, and I, I was so proud. I listened, I think, until make a hole on the disc. I'm still very busy with my album, so the thing is, I cannot remember my album or single that I first bought, but I think it was uh, Lenny Kravitz's Are You Going To Go My Way, or Go No Go My Way, uh, in about 93 or something, I was about uh, a nine year old or something. And then the album probably, I think, maybe Blur, uh, Park Life, I, I do not know, I think so. Question three. If you could bring back one artist from the dead, who would it be? If I could bring any artist back from the dead, no question, Freddie Mercury from Queen. That's just like one of my favorite musicians of all time. Grew up on Queen. If I could bring back one artist from the dead, obviously it would be Freddie Mercury. I would bring back Michael Jackson if I could. His untimely death really had a profound effect on me. Michael Jackson, 1000%. I would go on vacation and see the reenactments of Michael Jackson's concerts, and I wish I could see it in real life. He's amazing. His music is so talented. He's so talented. I wish I could actually go to a concert and see him now. That's like something I would really want to do. So definitely Michael Jackson. Uh, one artist that I could bring back from the dead would be Michael Jackson and just to see one of his live shows would be one of, in my bucket list, but what can you do? Most of my idols are gone, so I would be tempted to say Freddie Mercury, uh, Michael Jackson or Jeff Buckley, but if I could bring back one artist from the dead, it would be Colin Tench. That would be, uh, and there's so many you could pick from, sadly, who passed on, but the artists I think I'd choose would would be Jeff Buckley. Well, it would be Jerry Garcia from The Grateful Dead. Uh, if you know me, you know I'm a big deadhead and I love Grateful Dead music. I love Fish, Goose, all those great jam bands. Um, but Jerry has a special place in my heart. Yep, that's for sure. That's a pretty easy one for me. It would be Jimi Hendrix. If you go back to the period around when he died and uh, you have a look at the sort of music that he was uh, getting into and developing himself and uh, the way that he was going uh, musically, I mean, can you imagine how it would have developed and what that would have gone into and the originality and everything else that would have come out of Jimmy's, Jimmy's uh, imagination and what would it be like now? I mean, it would be absolutely mind-blowing, wouldn't it? If I could bring any artist back from the dead, it's got to be uh, Kurt Cobain, Nirvana, I love them and uh, I would love the chance to see them live. I'm going to go for Kurt Cobain, purely because the world right now is absolutely bloody mental and it would be wonderful to have the catharsis of listening to what that guy would sing about it. Um, I was toying with Kurt Cobain on this, on this one because he was a bit of a legend and has so much unfulfilled potential, uh, but um, I've gone for Avicii because that guy had um, hit after hit after hit lined up already and um, it's just a shame that he never saw the potential. If I could bring back one artist from the dead, it'd have to be Tupac. A little predictable, I know, but it would be John Lennon. I just wish I could see the end of that chapter. Like, he and Paul getting, you know, sort of back, maybe writing a song. I don't know, something. I feel like there's a part of the world that went missing when that happens. Yeah. It's hard. It's actually hard enough to do that one. I would say, as a guitar player especially, Randy Rhodes, um, he died at such a young age in a tragic plane crash. He only had two real studio albums that he put out, and uh, he's so influential, even with two albums, I can only imagine what it would have been like if he got to, you know, play an entire career. If I could bring back one artist from the dead, it would have to be John Lennon, because he was one of the most important artists of our time and taken far too early. John Lennon. Um, I'm a huge Beatles fan. I, I love everything they've done, get me and the rest of the world, uh, but, I mean, that was... A real, real tragedy. He was he was just ripped from uh, from the world far too early. So John Lennon. If I had to bring back one artist that passed on, it would definitely be Aaliyah. I feel like she had so much more to offer, and we did not get the chance to see it. 
So if I could bring one artist back from the dead, um, it would have to be, I think, David Bowie. Um, I know he had a long career anyway, um, but he was just one of a kind and I still think he had so much to give to the world. Um, so yeah, David Bowie. It would have to be David Bowie. Uh, why? Just because it's David Bowie. I love him. My mum would want me to say Elvis. I would normally say Dio, but this time I'm going to say David Bowie because I think he had a hell of a lot left to give to the world and he was just amazing. So yeah, I'd like to see him live again. And choose David Bowie. I would choose um, Ryuchi Sakamoto. Rest in peace. It's a tough one and so many that I would like to do that for. <laughs> um, unless, of course, it's like Pet Cemetery, then I wouldn't want to at all. But I would say uh, the Rev from uh, Avenged Sevenfold. He was a, a genius drummer and a terrific vocalist as well, actually. So, and uh, seems to be a, a fantastic person. So yeah, I miss him too. If I could bring back one artist from the dead, it would be Amy Winehouse. I was a huge fan of hers and I feel like she had a lot of potential. I would have to say Louis Armstrong because his trumpet skills were amazing and the voice, there's, there was nothing, there has been nothing that has matched. Would be pretty cool. I feel like this artist actually hasn't got the credit they deserve. Um, it's, it's a tough one for this one, but I've got to go with this one artist that um, I think him and his band were to the 70s, what the Beatles were to the 60s. And that artist is Bob Marley. If I could bring any artist back from the dead, um, I'd choose to bring my friend back. That's a bit selfish. Um, he wasn't much of an artist, but uh, he was only young, so I feel like he could have, you know, maybe come up with some good songs. Maybe that's selfish to say, but that's what I'm going to say. For artists that I would love to bring back into this realm would be Sinead O'Connor, of course, who left this world way too soon this past summer. Uh, for sure it was going to be Renato Russo from Brazil. He was a great friend and uh, uh, an excellent musician here. And I miss him a lot. He's a, a dear friend. My God, are you, I'm, I'm trying to do my album. Okay, the artist bring back from the dead, I'd probably say uh, Freddie Stair because he has the he has this the charm and the style and and the grace that is not around these days and I like him a lot. He's, he's a lovely man. An artist I would like to hear new music from again, who's no longer around, is Michael Grecker. Um, he collaborated in an, on an insane number of albums. You, you will find him everywhere, unexpected, diverse genres. It uh, would be amazing to hear him again. I would say it would have to be John Bonham. Because if John Bonham was back, we would have still had Led Zeppelin possibly. And it would have been just incredible to see where they would have went in the 80s. But you never know, John Bonham might have done some other stuff too. But I just thought he was one of the most brilliant percussionists and drummers of all time. If I could bring one artist back from the dead, it would be Mozart. I would like to hear and see what he thinks of today's music and what he could do with all the technology and equipment that we've got today, so those are If I could bring back one artist from the dead, who would it be? It would be Beethoven. I'd bring him back, I'd wake him up. I'd say, where do you get all those fantastic melodies from? And also, can I have a bit of what you've got, please? Question four. If you could have the voice of any artist throughout history, whose voice would you pick? <sighs> It's a tough one. Uh, I'm gonna go Roger Daltrey. He's kind of in the mix of everybody. He's got a fantastic voice. He's not, like he can sing really heavy, but he can sing really soft. And like, he's just kind of has that all around. That's a good that voice. Good shout. I would say uh, for me, it's Stevie Wonder. Uh, I love uh, I love singing Stevie Wonder, but I can't actually sing it. So if I could sing as well as anyone in the world, it'd be him. He hits the high lows, he hits the no lows. He's so melodic, he's the perfect voice for me. If I could have the voice of any artist in history, I'd love to have the voice of Frank Sinatra because it was a one-of-a-kind voice and still sounds great. I'd like to have a voice like Frank Sinatra, maybe Morrissey, 
they weren't perfect, but they're so distinct and just awesome. If I could have any voice, it would be also Freddie Mercury. I mean, how could you not pick him? He's just too good. It would probably either be Freddie Mercury's or at the risk of sounding conceited, like my own, because <laughs> I know it sounds terrible, but I'm proud of how far I've come with my voice and it's, it's mine. I developed it myself. It might not be perfect, but um, it's the one I got, so. <laughs> Uh, I've actually come around to be okay with my voice. I don't want to replace it with anyone else. I used to be quite insecure about it, but now I'm okay with it. I like it. I want to use my voice. I want to, I want to use my voice to the best of my abilities to make my own sound, my unique sound. So although it would be really cool to have a voice, say like Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin, I'm actually, I want to take my instrument and I want to make it the best that it can. You know, uh, it took me a long time to find my own voice. So uh, I'm not sure I would want to switch, switch it out. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent. However, uh, there will always be a special place in my heart for um, uh, Chris Cornell. Uh, just an amazing, amazing voice. One of my favorites, though, from an artist that tragically passed away was Chris Cornell from Soundgarden. I would take Chris Cornell's voice any day. That multi-octave range was just incredible, and he had such a dramatic voice. So Chris Cornell, for sure. Voice of any artist in history, I have to stick with Chris Cornell, uh, late of Soundgarden and his solo stuff. Amazing voice. I would take Eddie Vedder, Pearl Jam. That guy's voice just sounds so smooth to my ears and I love it, yeah, so I'd take his voice. Um, it's a tough one for me because I'm not really a singer. Um, I'd probably go with like Eddie Vedder or something like that. Um, but I'm a guitarist, so if I could play like anyone from history, who would it be? That's a, a, a better question and an easy question for me because the answer is Nile Rogers. Lou Reed. Uh, I will say Bjork. Who would want to have her voice? Being a Queen super fan, everyone would expect me to say Freddie Mercury. I could pick Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, or Jeff Buckley. But if I could have the voice of any artist in history, I would pick 10 out of 10 times the Aussie legend, John Farnham, and I'll fight you for it. If I had the voice of an artist, who would that be? And it would probably be Jeff Buckley as well. I'm an incredible voice, an incredible songwriter, performer. Uh, so yeah, Jeff Buckley. Voice of any artist in history, I'm gonna go with Jeff Buckley, because as you know, there's quite a lot of influence from him on my music as is. You know, about when uh, I was a teenager and full of all, that, all those hormones and stuff, Paul Rogers was the man, that voice was the voice. Whose voice would I love to have? Well, I would say Barry White, because I would love to get those extra dark, dark tones and those extra levels of uh, bass into my voice. So yeah, Barry White, definitely. If I could have a singing voice of any artist, it would be Michael Jackson. Just because he's a guy, but obviously the best singing voice of all time is Mariah Carey. The voice that I wish I had, um, if I had to choose, I would go with Luther Vandross. I mean, why not? That velvety, that velvety voice he had, and that, I, I can't do it, even to this day. <laughs> the voice that I would love to have, well, for me, there's only one defying voice, that's Ella. I would actually go for a modern artist, I think, for this one, um, which would be Orville Peck. Um, I just, I love his voice. Um, like the, because I'm a, I'm a baritone myself. Um, so I love that kind of deep, rich baritone sound. Um, but he've, he's got so much kind of um, power and upper register and like falsetto stuff. Um, I just love him. Yeah, Orville Peck. Uh, I would have to say probably a mixture between Janis Joplin and Whitney Houston. If I could have the voice of anyone in history, it would be Florence from Florence and the Machine. Everyone's expecting Dio again, aren't they? But I'm going to shock you again. I'm going to say, just because I've listened to her loads lately, Annie Lennox, um, because she can rock, she can pop, she's so versatile, and I just love her voice, I love her range, so yeah. Um, if I could have one voice of any artist in history, I'd go for a young Paul McCartney. 
Um, his vocals were just incredible. He could sing anything in any style. He was a complete vocal chameleon. I'm still such a huge fan. Okay, okay, you will not let me do my album, so I will answer. Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney is the voice I would like to have, but apparently I sort of have that, so I don't know. So in the pod, I answer this as Kurt Cobain, and I probably will stick with that answer, but um, if I had a set of lungs like Tom Jones did when he was 20, then I'd be well chuffed. I will go with Jason Mars because I think his voice is fantastic, and he makes some high pitches that amuse me, me a lot, amuse me. I could have the voice of any artist. Go be the ink spots. It's classic. Would be Sinead O'Connor again. I would also love to hear her sing. I would have loved to have sung with her. That would have been the greatest gift for me. Uh, what an amazing voice. So full of emotion and uh, heart rending, really. I uh, was amazingly saw her sing just before the pandemic in 2020, in February 2020, and that was amazing. It would probably be the rock voice of uh, Robin Zander of Cheap Trick. Uh, he's my favorite. I think I would choose Ariana Grande because her vocal range is insane. She can do crazy runs. For example, in her concert with The Weeknd that she just performed this year, she was doing so many runs, she was so talented. I wish I could have her voice. Even though she is popular mainstream right now, and she's still alive like in the century, she's young, I would still choose her. She's amazing, and I look up to her. On question five. What is your favorite song from the New Water Spotlight playlist from 2023? Without a doubt, my favorite Naz jam of 2023 was Caught in a Lie by Cerulean Chameleon. Just love it. Uh, again, like all the other questions, like the first question, a really difficult one to answer. There's been so many fantastic singles, uh, and I've picked the Thursday pick every week for the last year, so I could have really gone for, for any of those, and there was so many brilliant releases in the past year from Nas Artist, but the song I'm going to pick is From the Bones by Sparalim, a brilliant, brilliant track, incredible energy, passion, vocal arrangement, and I, I never tire of listening to that superb track. My favourite song from the new Artist Spotlight playlist this year has to be Get That Sick by Mr Odzo. Love it, uh, with Mike Tech and Todd Taylor as well. It's a fantastic rap tune, love the beat, and uh, yeah, he's one talented guy. Uh, favourite song from Nas in 2023 would be, at this moment, I'd say Motion, Sickness and Placebo. I love the song, I love the energy, I love the feel of it, and it's a great song, so great going motion sickness. My favorite Naz song from 2023 has got to be Bumblebee Blues at Eagle and Brent Thompson. Love that they're uh, bringing the blues back, just a classic 12 bar with some great guitar, and it's just a fun song. They sound like they had so much fun making it. My favorite song from Naz would have to be, right now, all of them, I love all of them, but right now would have to be Plush by Ed Eagle. I love the fact that he includes his daughter in some of his music and some of his videos. I think it's actually really cute to hear a little girl's voice in the beginning and then this like awesome music after. Like, I listen to it, it has a great beat. Um, your voice is so talented. It's amazing. So, yeah. That would have to be Little Pockets. Great song, great production, and great performance. And that's what we're all striving for. My favorite New Order Spotlight song of 2023, I'm gonna give it to the head honcho and Eagle with Bumblebee Blues. My favorite Nas song of 2023. That's a big question too. You definitely picked some hard questions for this one. But I think my favorite song would have to be Embracing Change by Andres Glaselli just because of the fact that it was just so amazing that he'd never done vocals before and then he came out and released this track with like such beautiful angelic vocals. It's definitely one of my favorites to listen to but again I just want to reiterate that I have so many favorite tracks that have come out this year. My favorite Nas song from 2023 it's Embracing Change and I'm not saying just 
just because I'm going to send this video to Andres. But I think Andres Guazelli is a, an amazing artist and deserves all the best in this world. Embracing change from yes, Andres. I agree. Not just because it's our friend. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. This is a tough one because obviously it's a tough one, but in, a, in multiple levels it's a tough one. So, I, but I'm gonna go with the one that personally I felt in my heart more than any other song this year was Hope, the demo by Yal Rana. That's just, I mean, it's almost like he was speaking directly to me at that point in my life. So, you know, you know, thank you so much for that. You, you know, brought a tear down my eye as I was listening to that one for the first time. So thank you. That would be hurt. It's uh, Patrick Gohm again as, as well, but it's just, uh, it's just a great song to listen to. It's just, it's got a great beat, everything. It's good. Ah, uh, my favorite song would have to be, how does it go? Um, the sky doesn't care. The wind doesn't care. The seas don't care about me. <laughs> or something like that. Um, yeah, uh, Don't Care by Patrick. I don't want to mess up your last name. I'm so sorry. So many. I love all, all the songs. This year has been one of the best in my time through NAS. I've enjoyed so many songs this year, but I'm going to say, just to be fair, Patrick Alm, Don't Care, because it's just absolutely amazing. Cannot fault that song. My favourite 23 NAS song is Don't Care by Patrick Alm. It starts relatively simple, but it builds up beautifully and it's well produced. What a lovely song. It's been a great year for NAS music, isn't it? Uh, everyone knows my taste by now, uh, I am all for the prog. So my two standouts this year are Nightmares by Billy Lowry and Don't Care by Patrick Alm. The best songs of the Nas in the 2023 for me is, I cannot say one, I cannot. It's two from Kaminsky, Black Salad and Hans, probably Hans followed by Black Salad and Don't Care by Patrick Arm. is amazing. They're both amazing. I love them both. There are so many other songs, but they are the gems for me, you know? Okay, I go to back to my album now, if it's okay. My favorite NAS song of 2023 has got to be Black Salad by Kaminsky. Just an amazing track and just does not get old. My favorite NAS song of 2023 has to be Time Out by the great San O'Hill because it hits all the right places in my heart and it's hard to get out of my head. This one was a really hard one and I went back and listened to a whole lot of songs that I really liked. And ultimately I'm gonna settle on, yep, you guessed it, Sano Hill, Time Out. I love that song. I know a lot of you do too. It's got, a, I think, an early Radiohead feel to it. Also, I just think Sano Hill's just a good songwriter. That's a song that happens to make reference to Yates in it, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so a lot of excellent, excellent candidates. Um, and, uh, and I know uh, every week, uh, whoever's able to make the top 20, just we get, we get spoiled with, with riches of good songs. But for me, that's the one I think overall for the year. Um, um, no, there are loads and an obvious one choice would be Sano Hill, uh, Time Out or Winaka, I Walk Alone. Um, but as you can hear in the background, I'm playing AOTC by about gorillas and vampires and that's um, definitely my choice. Absolutely brilliant song. And it's the song I wish I would have wrote myself. For me, it's Manaka, I Walk Alone. Uh, that song moved me to tear. It's packed with emotion. Um, it's just so well done. And um, I really, really enjoy it. This is a really tough one, but I would say my favorite Nas song of 2023 would be I Walk Alone with Wanaka. Yay. I'm gonna go with Daydreams and Algorithms by Eleanor Clydes. I think Nick's doing some really cool stuff and I'm a huge fan of sort of that slow core. I was really into Red House Painters in the 90s and um, I think it just captures that vibe. I love it, yeah, super chill and, and really good songwriting. So my favorite NAS song from 2023 would have to be Killing Time by Emily Gray, uh, produced by Charles Connolly. Um, it's so good. It's I, I'm a huge Emily Gray fan, 
um, and I think it's her best one so far. Yeah, really good. I thought this would be a harder one. It was still tricky, um, but there was one clear standout for me. Um, Charlie Black, Why Did You Go? Beautiful song. Um, that has to be my pick. My favorite Nas song for this year, can't go past Charlie Black's Why Did You Go? Three reasons, goosebumps, goosebumps, goosebumps. Again, I'm gonna go for Don Piper and Grenade because I still listen to it loads. So much fun, so amusing, and just, just a bit bloody rocking, isn't it? It's uh, Brian Cooper's Soma Drone. Um, the songwriting, the performance, the production, the voice, everything, it's a masterpiece. And of course, Soma coming from, you know, the Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, uh, means, and so it's so poignant for today's world, isn't it? Um, brilliant, fantastic. Uh, definitely Brian Cooper's Soma by Drone spoke to me uh, the most this year. Something special about that track between his amazing guitar skills and uh, writing. It just, it had everything it needed, but it was just him and his a, a guitar. So it's, it's pretty great. And my favorite NES song of 2023 is Gold by Jason Jessely. This is so hard to pick. It's so hard to pick favorite artist and favorite song because there are so many, so many amazing artists. But for this year, I'm going to pick Lonely Road from Lofthouse Leo because I love Leo. Mwah, love you, Leo. And that song is such a, an amazingly beautiful tribute that you sing so beautifully. So Lonely Road by Lofthouse Leo. Favorite last song this year has to be, or maybe I'm a bit biased because it's local to me, local Southampton. River Night Green and Gold. I just want to shout out to them because, you know, we've done a few gigs this last year or so, but we've been waiting for new music from them and it really didn't disappoint. I think they've done a great job with that track. Um, big shout out as well to Rich Allen because he had some really good songs. So it was a tough choice this year. Um, but yeah, both of those artists do really good stuff. Well, that's all we've got time for. All right, guys, it's been another great year and another great episode. Thanks for all the support for this year. Thank you to everybody who's taken part. Thank you to everybody who's been on the podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thank you guys for being awesome, being a great community. Well done to everybody who's been nominated. Anyone who hasn't been nominated, don't worry. As always next year, we'll see you again soon. And thank you to everybody who's supporting NAS. We love you all. We appreciate it here in Northern Spotlight. Thank you guys. Peace out. Yeah. New, new, new artist spotlight